whole story with monatomics, just to reiterate, is that monatomics, all the monatomics were patented by Robert Hudson, I believe that was about 40 to 60 years ago, quite a bit of time back, that all the monatomic elements were discovered and patented. And then what happened then is that all the medical companies could not just use osmium, iridium, or whatever, and try to brand it as Bayer or whatever kind of drug because they would be breaching the patent. And then in addition to that, because monatomics deal with the energetic body, meaning the spirit body first before it deals with the physical body, it also has the potential to bring a person into some kind of spiritual or paranormal experience, which is of course another thing that the medical industry doesn't want. So monatomics have only been used by the medical industry as the healing property, the actual healing property within any real any real wonder drug that they're presenting. So again, a wonder drug is basically if you have heart failure, they have a drug at Merck for heart failure, and that's called a wonder drug because it's dealing with a very extreme circumstance, right? But in that wonder drug, it consists of the monatomic, let's say osmium is what really helps with the heart, and that is the healing property of that substance. And then what is also added though, so that they can obtain the patent, is synthetics. So they have to add all this stuff, dimexanol, troxanol, stuff that they've created in order to basically change the formula of the substance so that they can patent it. And that's the only way that they can sell it. And then what that does is because monatomics, monatomic is, I, I can't stress enough, is actually alive. So it doesn't take well to synthetics. The whole idea of a monatomic is to change a synthetic into an organic. Because cancer can be seen as a synthetic. What a synthetic is, especially when you're dealing with this kind of reality, you find that on the general tense of how everyone sees a synthetic, nothing is synthetic, not even plastic, because all of it is made out of atoms. So if you really understand the definition of a synthetic, a synthetic is something that is moving at an extremely dense frequency, so dense that it appears to be what we call dead, okay? so. What the monatomic is opposed to this death, because it's actually on high spin. Mon monatomics are moving in the bottle, right? So what happens is, is that when the monatomic comes in contact with the synthetic, it's basically like a battle between the monatomic and the synthetic, where the mon monatomic is trying to make the synthetic real, or it's trying to get rid of the synthetic or the chemical. And this metamorphosizes in the person's life as synchronicities, feelings, emotions, dreams, different things that are moved around and changed intuitively within their body by them taking the substance. So monatomics is, in, is an intuitive substance. It's not uh, a, one of those things where you have to get the specific right combination. Like, Because monatomics themselves, because of being on high spin, will go into the body and then begin to pick up the energetic field in the body in the corresponding area that they belong in. So everyone has the entire periodic table inside of them, but it's now become, we can use the correct term, synthetic, because all of the elements that your ductless glands are producing, serotonin, melatonin, are being produced by foods and substances that are very low quality. Monsanto's food, air, the air and all these kind of things are what our body is using to produce these fluids and liquids. So if it can get an ultra pure version of the original raw matter needed to produce these liquids, then it brings the body into high spin. And then you get into more of like Dan Winter's work where you go into subconjugation. This means basically a complete harmony within the body. And then you're actually able to achieve bliss. Bliss is basically when all of the, the substances, melatonin, serotonin, and the, all the others that are produced by the ductless glands are in high quality and then all mixed together to make basically what you only can term as the spice menage, meaning basically the highest form of of element that can be accumulated within the human body. And this takes a person into bliss because at this point, their energy system is completely fired up. It's perpetual, it has no kinks in it. It doesn't have uh, any kind of dead cells in it where they can't have conductivity. And then obviously there needs to be a little bit more training because we're not the only individuals that have ever uh, gone into bliss or will ever go into bliss. And so there are rules 
in a tense to what goes on in Bliss because obviously Bliss has the potential as a very strong opiate to make you completely not even want to come in contact with the world because you'll feel so happy and so energetic that you won't want anything to disturb your Bliss, basically. But and then because you have Bliss, there's nothing really that you can't do, meaning that if you set your mind today to go to Switzerland, it all starts lining up for you. Or if you set your mind to go to the center of the earth, it all starts to line up for you. Your dreams are extremely lucid. It's not even like a dream. It's more like lucid all the time. You have a heightened version of intuition because you're moving on high spin, so you're actually on the cog that is the one that spins before the one on the, in the world spins, if that makes any sense. We introduced the complete line of monatomic products. Um, so what, there's this ongoing joke that I have these days, and I call it our monatomics and their monatomics. Okay, so this is what I'm talking about. Like, uh, let's try here. You can get that on camera. So this is, this is still going to cost you $150, by the way, from these people. Okay, there, there's the deposit. So this is what's created this myth that's true <laughs> on the internet about monatomics. But the confusion is it's really diatomics. And it's monatomics that are created in your, the garage, in some raggedy lab where some guy... <laughs> Oh my goodness, oh my goodness. Huh? Hold on, all right. <laughs> and he comes back and he, oh, where, was, where was I even in? Just, all right, that's enough. <laughs> and you know, it's, it's ridiculous. It's obvious whoever knows about this stuff doesn't want you to get your hands on it. And we know why. And we know why. And this is, I will tell people sometimes too that remember our monatomics are designed to take a person like this. Okay? Like this. Not like this. Okay? This does do this. <laughs> and it also does this. And so the danger of if you fall down off a few steps on the ladder, you'll recover. You fall down from the top, we may see you next lifetime. So that's what we got going on here. But again, there's an ongoing joke within the, the league now about just the difference in the monatomics. But this is the complete line. And as you can see, I, I put it into a case here. And I'm going to hold that up to the camera just a little bit, just so you can see so you can see as much as you can of it. But what's inside of here is actually the practitioner's kit, um, which I took out of its box that it generally comes in. But the practitioner's kit is here. And what this is, is all of the monatomics um, separately. So here you have palladium. I'm not even sure if you can actually see that. The, the light or the reflection is a little bit crazy in the room today. But um, so what you're dealing with basically is many of the elements from the periodic table in their own bottle by themselves is even more rare because generally you get monatomics that are mixed up it's supposed to be iridium supposed to be ruthenium supposed to be this 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 and then they put it all into the same mixture and they send it to you the practitioner set actually allows you to have each monatomic by itself and in a state where it can be ingested by the body so for instance osmium is the most dense substance known to man right so it has a lot to do with anchoring but you, first of all, you, just good luck in finding some osmium. Next level, good luck in finding some osmium that you can ingest. Next level, good luck in finding some osmium that you can buy. <laughs> Next level, you see what I mean? Then sight line is complete. That is the line that, of course, is R and all. Honorous. Reset. MFKZT 1000.
So it's the same thing with Ethereum. The Ethereums are naturally occurring monatomics. Somebody said, well, what's the difference between Ethereums and our, mon uh, our monatomics? Naturally occurring monatomics versus these monatomics, are they natural? We're talking about purification processes here. No vegetable matter, no metallic matter, meaning that everything is in stages, homeopathy, uh, uh, chelated, those are all stages of the product. Uh, colloids or particles, these are stages of the product. Monatomic is known as the highest stage because it brings everything back to its first atom, thus allowing it to become assimilable for the body. So that's what I was mentioning earlier. The reason why you can ingest mercury in this state is because it's in monatomic state. Other than that, uh, it's somewhat of a very painful process. If you want, really want to understand this, because this is not just monatomics, it's also spagyrics. Some of the elements that we're presenting have a monatomic form of herbs, so ultra-pure form of an herb. But spagyrics is actually a, a, a very prominent medical method in places such as Switzerland. So if you go to the U.S., obviously no one knows about spagyrics. If you go to Germany, they're now incorporating homeopathy or have been incorporating homeopathy within their medical institutions, but spagyrics is still not there. But if you go to Switzerland, they've gone all the way into spagyrics. And again, all this monatomics and spagyrics, all it really is is the ultra-pure form of the essence of the substance. And the energy potential, which means this is, is still there, meaning this stuff is still alive. Finally, again, to, to just understand what monatomics is and why it's been so difficult to get monatomics, especially on the internet, is because generally anyone that can produce this type of substance has a tendency to just keep it for themselves or just allow it to be available through private practice. And obviously what you're dealing with overall just to make it very simple, is something very similar to what you deal with when you understand frequency and how effective frequency can be on things based on its carrier. And I'll explain that very briefly. Most people carry frequency over audio devices, i.e. you hear the frequency. This can be tones, gongs, chakras, etc. Or in audio devices can be anything from speakers all the way to instruments, right? And so there's a certain level of penetration that audio has, but it's not on a cellular level. Uh, it, meaning it won't penetrate, audio will not penetrate you on a cellular level. It takes radio waves to penetrate you on a cellular level, or a gamma ray can penetrate you on a cellular level. And this means that basically it not only hits you, but it goes right through you. And obviously it even can conduct through you, meaning that you could be used as an antenna for many of the Wi-Fi devices and things that are around because of the frequency that they're actually on. So crossing that over into these substances, if you're dealing with, let's say, ultra pure monatomics, it can penetrate a person onto the cellular level, but really what I'm calling more of the spiritual or etheric level. So thus it has the potential to, to assist the person on that etheric level, which definitely affects the person on the physical level. So if you understand it, some substances really deal with more of the physical level and they don't get into the higher range of the more ethereal level for treatment of the individual's bioenergetic uh, field. And so what ends up happening is, is that it's a cap to what it can really do. That's why monatomic, there's no really, there's no cap really on the physicality, especially to what it can really do. Monatomics put an individual on high spin. It puts an individual into the stage of consciousness that is necessary for them to, to, to even glide into their inner verse. And it's not a joke, it's not a game. So this is something that if you're doing it for the first time, you, a, you need that support system. But you also have to realize with other individuals that want to go right into MFKZT 1000 and go in a high spin, you know, a, a raggedy chariot and off, for lack of better terms, that is not the proper method of how to go into the activation. So whatever the person experiences, you're able to go back in because some people you're not going to be able to stop. They're going to be like, oh, no, I want to go into monotomic right away. And, you know, I'm, I'm OK. I got a good diet. Trust me, I'm, I'm, I feel it. And then they take it and then 
I won't say anything negative occurs, but something maybe not to the degree of what they expected or something that was completely too aggressive for them begins to occur, then you can also remind the person, hey, and that's why our products are, are in a tense uh, staged in their strength. Uh, to when a person takes it one time, it puts only a certain amount into the system. So if the person starts to speed up, they say, whoa, 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 this is a little bit too much for me. You say, well, wait a minute, that's what we talked about, is that now you're on, you know, you're going into the practitioner's kit and you haven't even gone into the internal cleansing. Why don't you see that it works though? Let's, you know, rewind here and then get this to a point so that way when you get into that stage again, you're able to fully maximize what you're experiencing. You know, I was noticing that the effects of monatomics are so subtle sometimes that even the biggest adepts, the greatest adepts that have opportunity to utilize them, don't even realize where they where it's affected their lives because of not being present. Meaning that if you just if you've ever had the opportunity to use a product and you just look at yourself, you count off two months from where you were when you started using it to where you are actually now. Especially in the mind. Some people are always looking for the physical phenomenon, which happens way later on. They tell you that physical phenomenon is below the speed of light. It's, it's caught up in time. So especially in your mind, you see your mind is it's vast intellect. Now longer do you have these, these barriers that are saying, well, no, you can't have a ship. And no, you can't see if two large interlacing pieces of titanium metal spiraling together will create a portal. You can't see if you can create an atmosphere generator so that you can live in a bubble or going into another reality that doesn't have an atmosphere, but you need one that can support you because you're in a physical vehicle or dropping vehicles all together that are physical and going into other geometry that we know are present. Like when a person starts to meditate, you feel this thing wobbling back and forth, right? Or you feel some things on your hands, but if someone else is looking at it, they can't see nothing. He's like, man, I feel like I'm vibrating. The person looking at it, I don't see anything. It's because there's another body or another vehicle right there that's so close. So I'm just saying to people that you have to understand that there's a whole different level of expansion available here for uh, uh, what you are, which extends beyond what you understand as just being a human being. Like it actually extends into everything. And so in order for a person to even begin to, to comprehend that now, below the speed of light. Again, that's why gravity exists on Earth, and I'm not going to get into any kind of deep spiritual conversation here, but I'll explain to you. You're already in a vacuum, and that's what gravity is. Gravity holds you down because something is sucking you down. When you get above the speed of light, where there's zero gravity, nothing is sucking you. You see what I mean? So in that tense alone, you're going to need a lot of thrust to get to higher stages of consciousness. So that's what this is about. This is about thrust, but thrust has to do with fuel. Your fuel consistency has to be to a level of being able to ignite. That's it, basically ignite into the stage that you wanna actually get to. You see what I mean? So every stage that you wanna to get to, and I'll conclude here, person's gonna need the fuels in order to get into a higher stage of consciousness. Um, you could do it with breath, yes depend upon how much damage you've done to the body. And this has been the cleanup crew, meaning that there are gonna be a lot of people that tell you, well, you don't need to do that. All you have to do is center yourself and blah, blah, blah. And then if you ask them about the expanse, they've never been before. So the reality is, is that it's still based on what you know to be the truth on what nature shows you. Learn from nature. Nature's been here for billions of years. So this means that all of its consistencies, its building blocks, its elements are what it chose to accumulate in order for it to give it that kind of longevity because it's a survivor. 